So my name's Lauren, obviously, and I'm a librarian. And I also am completely in love with WordPress, which is why I'm here. So thank you all, everybody who's like, contributed to making that happen. Um, and I'm going to talk today about teaching the public in the public library how to use WordPress to make their own websites. So why the library? Right? So my library's mission is really broad. Basically, you can fit anything in it. It's to contribute to the recreational, cultural, and educational needs of the people of Queens, which is everything. So educational, you know, WordPress works for that. Um, libraries in Queens are everywhere. If you are in Queens, anywhere other than JFK, you're in walking distance to a public library. Um, I work at the one in Jamaica and it's the central library and so we have a great training room um, and it's a really just a good space to teach uh, we're also everything's free no one charges for anything we're trusted in the community and we provide services for everybody and it's a, just a great place to do that also libraries are the old school open source we've been lending things out for free since 1732 thank you ben um, and we haven't really stopped since then. And so when I'm teaching something, I'm usually looking for something that people can access at home for free. Uh, and WordPress does that for them, which is really fantastic. So that's why WordPress. So I could use, there are so many different ways to build a website that are web-based that we could use to teach people how to make a website in the public library. But we use WordPress because, well, it's open source, it's free. Um, it has a community versus being locked into paid services. Um, and as a librarian, I'm super uncomfortable, you know, telling someone they should use a particular commercial service. Um, that doesn't really work for me. And telling someone that they have to use a service that they have to pay for also doesn't work for me because I work in a really economically diverse community. Some people have money. And a lot of people really don't. And maybe they want to have a blog anyway. Maybe they want to have a website and start their small business anyway, but they don't have a lot of resources to do that. WordPress fills that niche really well. Um, so the most difficult part of doing this has been the technology setup. Like, hands down, that has been the most complicated thing. So I've tried a couple different ways to do it. Um, the first, the first time I tried a one session workshop with WordPress.com, it sort of worked, except that no one ever remembers their email password. S ever, <laughs> ever remembers their email password. Like two times a day, I have to help somebody recover it. It's insane. Uh, and so like you can't get the confirmation email for WordPress.com because you can't remember your email password. And then that takes up a half an hour of the class just recovering everyone's password. So that didn't work. Um, then we used instant WordPress, uh, which was good, but difficult to get the sites off, as in difficult as in I haven't figured it out yet. Um, so those practice sites are still sitting on those flash drives. Uh, it was really great. Um, I also didn't have a budget for flash drives, so it wasn't really sustainable. We used the lost and found ones that had been left there for like a year, oh. <laughs> cleared them out. You know, people, if, if you leave your flash drive at the library for a year, we're going to assume that you don't need it anymore. Um, and then we did the thing that did work, which was I have a set of MacBooks that we got from a grant a couple years ago where somebody said, spend this money. And I said, I want MacBooks. And they gave me MacBooks, and it was magical. Um, and we installed a MAMP stack on each of them to have a test environment for people to try it out. Um, and so there's a reason that I'm doing it this way specifically. So I want to make sure that the people who are learning how to build these websites have enough of an understanding of how a website works underneath that they can talk to tech support when it inevitably gets screwed up, right? And so building the MAMP stack and having them build it on the .org side instead of just doing the .com besides the email portion of it means that they have to learn the vocabulary and they have to have sort of an understanding of how it works so that they can do that next time when they go to do it. Um, so we break the workshop down into three parts. Um, each one's about two to three hours long, depending on how much time I can get the room for. Uh, the first workshop goes is setup and WordPress structure, and then we talk about servers, how a server stack works, 
what it is, what the vocabulary and language is. And this is where I lose people, which is actually fine. So a lot of times people will show up to the class thinking it's Microsoft Word um, <laughs> and or thinking they can just hop in and do it and they're not ready, like they've just come off of Intro to Internet, we just taught them what a browser is, they're still figuring out the mouse and they want to do a website real bad, but they're not quite there yet and they need more other classes to prepare them for this. And so we put the complicated, scary stuff up front so that we can then have a conversation with them about what they need to do to get to the point where they are ready to do this part. So in this class we, we do the setup, the server structure, and then we also do how to do wireframes and how websites are laid out. Um, in class two, we talk about how to add content, the difference between pages and posts, and it, the difference between plugins and widgets, because nobody understands that either. Uh, everybody thinks they're the same thing, uh, even though they're totally different and not related. It's fun. Um, how to find images and how to add them to the media library and manage that. And then we talk about image size, which is also really important because they will put huge images in there and then it will take forever to load. In the third class, we wrap up everything we did in the second one, take a look at what we've got on our test sites, and then we talk about accessibility, security, and SEO. And a lot of the accessibility stuff, we go through the tools that you can use to check, we go through, um, talk about adding alt tags and what a meaningful alt tag would be because a lot of times if you've never built a site before and you've never used an alt tag you have no idea what it is and these are almost always very very beginners um, and then for security we talk a lot about passwords and making sure it's not the same that you don't use the admin as your admin name and all of that stuff lots of stuff doesn't work um, so the very first time I did a five session, or, well it was supposed to be six, a uh, six session workshop where we were um, having teenagers build WordPress sites for local small businesses. Uh, one, we had a giant blizzard right before the very first class and so I had to call from my house everybody who was on the registration list and be like don't drive, <laughs> you know, don't come to the library. Um, and then the businesses didn't participate the way they were supposed to, so they didn't show up, which makes it difficult to teach a group of teenagers how to talk to small businesses about what their site should look like if the small business doesn't come. Um, and so we have a really fantastic laundromat site kind of hanging out, just waiting for the laundromat to claim it. Um, you know, um, And then Instant WordPress didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to to either because we couldn't move, manage to move the sites off it. I did have one business who came in the beginning and then came at the end to get the site and we actually had to rebuild it on his hosting service because we couldn't get it to move over. Um, but even with all that, we had a lot of really great results. Um, we have got two blogs that are set up and running that I know the people and still talk to. Uh, alexandersmom.com and befittingstyle.com, which are really great. Uh, one woman had been a web developer before but hadn't worked with WordPress very much and she actually started getting job interviews because she could transfer her knowledge over and now she had the vocabulary to talk about WordPress. Uh, so she got at least one job interview, which was awesome. Um, and then one of the great things about it is that teaching multi-session workshops in a library People don't show up for the rest of them. Uh, they come in for the first one and the second one and maybe they're like, eh, it's free, why come back? But this one we managed to hold on to almost everybody and that was really great. Um, we also got really fantastic survey results for everybody and the super fun laundromat website, which I'm still sort of hanging on to. Um, Basically, I think we need to think of libraries as a place where people can learn things like this. We do a lot of basic digital literacy and teaching people how to use Microsoft Office and teaching them how to find job, like use that to find jobs in regular industry, but we don't always bring in the advanced things for adults. Uh, we'll do coding for kids because it's trendy and that's what libraries 
you know, do. We do education and everybody's talking about that and so we bring it in. But we really do need to be reaching out to adults and teaching them career skills that they can use that are more advanced than just Microsoft Word. And WordPress gave us a really great place to sort of fit that in without having to teach coding itself which is really difficult to do with people who are just in that intermediate digital literacy stage. Like they've got Excel, but getting to coding is hard. So I really hope that a lot of people will try this and will try to bring these sorts of things into libraries because I think it can be a really big difference in people's experiences. And that's, I'm good. Thanks.